on the heels of rumors stating that Cyberpunk 2077 was held back due to weak software, particularly the Xbox One, we asked the question, is the Xbox One holding back new exhilarating game experiences that may be possible? Let's talk about it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Do me a huge favor before we get into this one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because y'all know the deal. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. Okay, what you see here on the screen is, uh, let's see here. If I can get you. Yep, there you go. What you see there on the screen is an article on the broadbandbullies.com website. And I'm telling you, this website be popping. I'm t the, the news and, and the contributions that we have, big up to the finest, you know what I'm saying? He's a contributor as well. The latest breaking news. If you want it, if you consider yourself a gamer that wants to be in the know, check out the website. Sign up too. You can sign up and then you'll be entered into um, raffles that we're going to have for those that participate and comment on most of the articles that being said i wanted to point everybody in this video to an article that uh, we posted not too long ago it's a call it's an article that i did some research on and, and and helped put together um and it it's it's titled insider blames xbox one for cyberpunk 2077 delay and for those of you that are not familiar um there is a Polish quote unquote insider. They refer to him as the Polish uh, Jason Schreier of the talk. <laughs> um, and he's supposed to be, you know, real close to some developers within CD Projekt Red. And he is also supposed to be knowledgeable about insides of various gaming stories before they break. So he was on a podcast, or he has a podcast where he was talking about. Um, CD Projekt Red's latest, uh, most recent delay, excuse me, of uh, Cyberpunk 2077. And he tried to peer into the world of why I got pushed back by giving us some rumors that he got some from some of his insiders. So let's look at the article. So in particular, his name is, uh, I'm gonna butcher it. So yeah, let, let, let me not even attempt that. But the insider says, that the original Xbox console is not powerful enough to run the game properly, and apparently, Cyberpunk 2077 performance on the console is extremely unsatisfactory. Now, before I go any further, once we posted this article, I did get a, a wide response, a wide range of response from people. What about the PlayStation as well? And I get it, I get it. Um, because in it, he alludes that, you know, next generation, I mean, current generation consoles are to be cited as problematic for CD Projekt Red trying to release this game. But they particularly point to Xbox. Particularly point to Xbox, okay? And I think that's important because of this in, in the main thesis of this video. We are now going into 2020 and we're going to have the next Xbox release. That next Xbox is rumored to be more powerful than the, the competing PlayStation 5. Um, they showed us what is supposed to be like an engine or whatever you want to call it, uh, a demonstration of Hellblade 2, which is going to be exclusive to the system. Um, that game is not expected until maybe 2021, 2022, maybe, right? That being said, two things to take away from that. Hellblade, if you look at the prior Hellblade, I know it's getting a lot of buzz critically through the airwaves, but a lot of people haven't even played it and, the, and, and they haven't touched it because it doesn't have broad appeal in its current format. Now, with the war chest of Microsoft, is it gonna be a full-fledged, fleshed out AAA game? Who knows, we'll see. With that, if it, if it even is the latter, we're not gonna see it until 2022. And normally when you get new hardware, hardware that boasts power, people wanna see that power and the capabilities. They wanna be taken to different worlds and different lands and stuff like that. And they wanna see what's possible via that box, just to get a good taste of it. And it's not always an upscale and resolution and, and, and stuff like that that makes that possible that, or that, that extenuates uh, what is possible with that box. 
is gameplay experiences. Digital Foundry talked about them, you know, where Rise and Dead Rising 3 couldn't be done on the Xbox 360. Where Call of Duty 2, you know what I'm saying, and, and even Perfect Dark to a certain extent, a lot of those elements couldn't be done on the original Xbox. And more recently, you have where Horizon Zero Dawn makers, Guerrilla Games said that they wanted to implement flying into Horizon Zero Dawn. And that wasn't possible because of the architecture and the power limitations of the current PlayStation. So guess what? Horizon Zero 2 is gonna have flying in it, more likely than not. And if it does, guess where it's not gonna be? The PlayStation 4. So because of those situations, we have to ask ourselves, is it a good thing for us to have a powerful, powerful box, supposedly, be released, more expensive than its competitors, likely, for it to just basically be a box for the first year or two to up res games that you can play anywhere else. All of the games that are gonna be there, pretty much you can play anywhere else, right? Unless we get a Witcher uh, 3 situation where a third party developer says, we're not making said game for prior hardware. You know what I'm saying? If something like that comes out the first year, great. But in, in all likelihood, you don't have those situations because third party developers wanna make money and they don't make money off the first year alone of new games. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of their stuff is cross gen. So if I'm looking for a next gen experience, not just something with bumped up resolutions, because really how much more 4K or <laughs> can 4K get? I mean, I get it, they can increase textures and stuff like that. But if you're looking for next gen experiences with implementation, not just visuals, but implementation that can't be done elsewhere as far as consoles are concerned, what am I getting out of the Xbox? That's what I'm thinking. And what? why am I buying this thing for $600 is what I'm thinking. And if I'm itching for a next generation experience, and let's just say I currently have an Xbox, right? But then I see that the PlayStation 5 with its next gen exclusives is providing that. And I have, and I got money in my pocket ready to burn, but I want those next gen experiences. Guess what I'm doing? I'm trading in my Xbox and I'm getting a PlayStation 5. We gotta put ourselves in the mind state of the, the, the typical consumer. I get that casuals don't run out and flock to go buy PlayStations or buy anything at launch. That's not what casuals do. Casuals keep their ear to the ground. So as the groundswell of mindshare is rising for a particular item, casuals normally want to follow the herd. They want to belong. I always use the scenario, if I fall out the window and land on the cement and, uh, and, and, and people surround me and they see that I'm, I fell out the window and I'm clutching and uh, Halo Infinite, you know, they might be like, oh, that's why he jumped out the window. Oh, that's crazy. Let me see what made him jump out that window. And then they, you know, they flock to it thereafter. So that's how you got to look at these generational launches. They're not just about the fact that casuals may not buy them at mass at the beginning. It has a trickle effect. I've, I've seen it particularly when I was talking to people that were staunch Xbox people in their minds. They were casual games, but they were staunch Xbox. And then they easily jumped from 360 to the PlayStation 4. Once again, that, that groundswell of mind share started to take place and they started to hear things. 1080p60 makes you a better gamer. So again, you guys got to think about this. Xbox not having any innovative next-gen experiences exclusive to that powerful box People are gonna question, why would I pay $600 for that? And if they're not satisfied with whatever features, there gotta be some hellified features, and if they're not satisfied with those hellified features, then they're not gonna get the box. But if PlayStation does a fantastic job of showing you that they're gonna provide you next-gen experiences, guess what those casuals that do buy the games at launch are gonna do? Or even a lot of people that may be beyond casuals. They're trading in their Xbox to get a PlayStation and then they may not ever look back until next generation. So it's not, I don't think it's, in my opinion, it's not the best proposal. You hear people that originally were staunch on, oh, the Skelling's gonna take care of everything, the Skelling, to, to now they're saying they don't know. They don't know, they're backpedaling. And that's okay because that's great. It sparks this conversation, it sparks this discussion that we need to have. 
But again, I plead for everybody to go check out the Broadband Bullies article. Go read that in totality. Read all the sources, and then you make up your mind. You know, and let's get let's get um, Xbox on the record. Let's get them to talk about this. They're going to be on one of my favorite podcasts, uh, GTR, on for the thousandth episode. Big ups to them. That's coming February fifteenth. I think they said Valentine. It's coming around that time. I may have had much, but but um, stay tuned to them to get more information on that. But again, let's continue this discussion because every time we try to sweep this under the rug, something comes out more prevalent that makes it, you know, evident that this got to be answered. Okay, and we got to be the ones that are pushing people, putting people's feet to the fire to get those answers. And that's it from your boy, MM2K. Let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and the fastly growing Stadia Dosage. Hey, look, I appreciate all the support there, but y'all are bad to be here and going there. <laughs> Don't forget about me here too, but I appreciate all the support, man. We 100 subs on uh, YouTube and we're going to keep growing, you know? So with that being said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.